qué hola. ¿Qué tal, Jacinto? Oye, llega tarde. Quedamos en vernos a las 5, ya van a ser las 6. ¿Qué te pasó? Vaya, discúlpame esa, Ana. Me enredé en la pincha con un cliente que llegó a última hora, pero no te preocupes, que los socios me llamaron y apenas ya acaban de llegar al malecón. Bueno, vamos a movernos ya, que después tengo que coger un visitaxi e irme para casa de Anita y no quiero que se haga tarde. Mira tú, no sabía que Guate era en casa de la Anita. Wow, now, did you catch all that? My guess is probably no, but not to worry. We'll break down everything you just heard and also give you some insight on how to understand one of the most difficult dialects of Spanish. Vamos a empezar. Bienvenidos. Welcome to the Learn Spanish con Salsa Podcast. The show for Spanish learners that love music, travel, and culture. Close your grammar textbooks, shut down the language apps, and open your ears to how Spanish is spoken in the real world. Let us show you how to go from beginner to bilingual. Here is your host, certified language coach, Tamara Mari. Hola, oyentes. Bienvenidos. Welcome to episode 11 of the Learn Spanish con Salsa podcast. Now, you're probably wondering what dialect of Spanish you heard at the beginning of this episode and exactly what were they saying. If you're a beginner, that was probably really hard to follow. And even if you're intermediate level, it was still probably difficult to catch every single word that was said. And that's because some of the words in the conversation were very specific to one region of Spanish speakers in the Caribbean. In this episode, we're going to visit the island of Cuba, and we're going to explore some vocabulary that's very unique to the island of Cuba. Now, if you didn't catch the last episode, go back and check out episode 10, where we talked about five places that you absolutely must visit if you want to experience the real Cuba. Like most dialects of Spanish from the Caribbean, Cuban Spanish is a bit different than other forms of Spanish. Many people may notice it when you hear someone from Cuba speaking Spanish. They have a little bit of an accent, and it's very particular to the island. Now, there are also different accents in different regions of Cuba, just like in the United States, where we have an accent from the north, one from the south, one from the Midwest, etc. Cuba is no different, so you will find some variation in accent even among Cubans. Cuba is also unique in that it has a huge expat population. There are many people who have left the island over the years for various reasons and live all over the world. So as I mentioned in previous episodes, I really don't believe that there's a such thing as neutral Spanish. Everyone has a culture, a background, a place that they come from, and that heavily influences the way they speak and their vocabulary. So the words I'm about to share with you are really only used in Cuba. But as I mentioned earlier, many Cubans have moved to different parts of the world. So you may run into a pretty large community of Cubans even outside of Cuba. Uh, most people think about Miami and Florida and the United States has a very large Cuban population and has for years. But that's not the only place that Cubans live, even though it's what most people think about. You will find populations of Cubans in other countries and in other cities within the United States. So it's good to know a little bit about the Spanish that's spoken in Cuba. So let's get into it. I'm going to share with you seven Cuban Spanish words you didn't know. But I assure you by the end of today's episode, you will know them all. So let's get to it. Now, since I'm not from Cuba, I've actually enlisted the help of some native Spanish speakers that are from the area. So those are the voices you will be hearing throughout today's episode. So first, I'll let you listen to the audio of a Cuban Spanish speaker saying one of the terms, and then I will explain to you the meaning. Let's get to the first term. Acere. So this first word, acere, means something like friend or buddy. It's a term of endearment that's usually used between male friends. When I was in Havana, I heard this all the time in the street. People greeting each other, ah, acere, acere. So it is a quintessential Cuban word, and it's something that if you hear it, you know that the person that's speaking is most likely from Cuba. Now let's listen to the second word. Que hola. So this is actually a phrase. Que bola means 
what's up or what's new. So it's another way of saying que pasa, como estas. But again, this is something that you'll really only hear in Cuba. Now, when used together as a phrase, que bola means what's up. But if you just hear the word bola by itself, it has a little bit of a different meaning. So I'm going to let you listen to this example of the word used in context, and I'm going to see if you can guess what it means, and then I'll go ahead and give you the answer. Now, I'm going to play this at regular speed first, and I'll slow it down just a little bit so that you can hear it a little better. So I'm going to play it twice. So go ahead and take a listen and see if you can figure out what this word means. Oye, espere que te cuenta esta bola. Oye, espere que te cuenta esta bola. Okay, so if you didn't catch that, he said, Oye, espera que te cuente esta bola. So that translates to, hey, wait until you hear this. So in this case, bola is short for rumor or gossip or the word on the street. So now that gives a little bit of context to the prior phrase, que bola, because that means sort of what's the word on the street or what's the news. So that was numero tres, number three. Now let's move on to word number four. Yuma. Yuma. All right, now let's listen to it in context and let's see if you can guess what it means. And once again, I'm going to play it more than once so that you really get a chance to hear. Toda mi familia se ha ido para la Yuma. Toda mi familia se ha ido para la Yuma. Did you catch that? All right, so what he said is, Toda mi familia se ha ido para la Yuma. So that translates to, all of my family has left for La Juma. And if you haven't guessed what that means, La Juma is short for Los Estados Unidos or the United States of America. So it's a way not only to say the U.S., but it's also a term that's used to refer to a foreigner that's from the U.S., so in that way, it's similar to the term gringo, but this one is very specific again to Cuba. Now let's listen to numero cinco, phrase number five. Moro y cristiano. Moro y cristiano. Now this phrase is a little bit different. I'm going to have to explain this one. So moros y cristianos translates to Moors and Christians. Now, Christians is self-explanatory, but I'm going to explain a little bit about the Moors. Now, this is actually spelled capital M-O-O-R-S, and it refers to a group of North African Muslims that actually occupied Spain in the 700s. So this is a little known fact about Spanish history. Most people know about the Spanish conquistadors, the conquerors who went throughout the world and occupied many different places, including many places in Latin America and Cuba. But most people don't know that there was a period in history that the Spanish were actually occupied by this group of Muslim warriors from Northern Africa. So I'm going to put a link in the show notes so if you're interested to read up on the history of the Moors. But back to this term, Moors and Christians, what does that refer to? So like many terms in Latin America, this is just another way to say rice and beans and there's many different ways to say rice and beans in latin america many different dishes that are based with rice and beans but in this case it's referring to black beans and white rice so i guess that has something to do with the fact that the moors were africans and the christians in this case were from europe so i guess the idea is that black beans next to white rice looks a little bit like moros y cristianos let's move on to numero seis number six so I'm going to do something a little different with this one. I'm actually going to play the clip for you so you can hear it used in context. And I'm going to see if you can guess what it means. Now I'll play it a few times again so you can hear it a little bit slower to see if you can catch everything that he's saying. And then I'll come back and explain exactly what he said. So let's see if you can guess the meaning of guateque. Mira tú, no sabía que guateque era en casa de la anita. Mira tú, no sabía que Guatequer en casa de la Anita. So did you catch that? He said, no sabía que el Guateque 
era en casa de Anita. So I didn't know that the guateque was at Anita's house. So if you haven't guessed, guateque is another word for fiesta or party. So let's listen to it one more time. Mira tú, no sabía que guateque era en casa de la Anita. Now we've come to the end of the list. This is numero siete, number seven. This is the last Cuban Spanish word we will cover in this episode. And this one is pretty short, so you should be able to understand. So I'll play it a few times, and then I'll come back and talk about the Cuban Spanish word in this clip. Saliendo pan malecón. Saliendo pan malecón. Okay, so that one should have been a little bit easier. He said, saliendo pal malecón. This translates to going to or on our way to the pier, el malecón. So, and that's pier, P-I-E-R, like a pier by the water, not P-E-E-R. So, malecón in Spanish in general just translates to pier. However, in Cuba, it has a very specific meaning. A malecón is actually a very famous pier in the city of Havana. A lot of the most famous hotels in Cuba are along the Malecón, and it's a place where people go to hang out, to party for different holidays in Cuba. It's a very popular place to hang out. So that is the Malecón. In the show notes, I'll actually link to a picture of the Malecón from my trip to Cuba so you can have an idea of what it looks like. So that is it for the seven Cuban Spanish words you didn't know and now you know. So just a brief review. Numero uno was acere, which is friend or buddy used between men. Que bola, which is a greeting that means what's up or what's new. Bola, which means rumor or gossip. Juma, which is the United States or a person from North America. Moros y cristianos, which refers to black beans and rice. Guateque, which is a party. And finally, El Malecón, which is the famous pier in the city of Havana. So let's listen to that dialogue that we heard at the beginning of the show. And let's slow it down to see if maybe we can understand a little bit more of what's being said. ¿Qué hola? ¿Qué tal, Jacinto? Oye, llega tarde. Quedamos en vernos a las cinco, ya van a ser las seis. ¿Qué te pasó? Vaya, discúlpame, Sana. Me enredé en la pincha con un cliente que llegó a última hora, pero no te preocupes, que los socios me llamaron y apenas ya acaban de llegar al malecón. Bueno, vamos a movernos ya, que después tengo que coger un visitaxi e irme para casa de Anita y no quiero que se haga tarde. Mira tú, no sabía que guardé que era en casa de la Anita. Now let's listen to it with the English translation. ¿Qué hola? What's up? ¿Qué tal, Jacinto? Oye, llega tarde. Quedamos en vernos a las cinco, ya van a ser las seis. ¿Qué te pasó? Hey, Jacinto. You're late. We were meeting at five and it's six already. What happened to you? Vaya, discúlpame, esa Ana. Me enredé en la pincha con un cliente que llegó a última hora, pero no te preocupes, que los socios me llamaron y apenas ya acaban de llegar al malecón. I'm sorry for that one, Ana. I got stuck at work with a last-minute client. But don't worry. The guys called me, and they got to the pier just now. Bueno, vamos a movernos ya, que después tengo que coger un visitaxi e irme para casa de Anita, y no quiero que se haga tarde. Well, let's move now. I have to take a busy taxi to go to Anita's, and I don't want to get there late. Mira tú, no sabía que guardé que era en casa de la Anita. Well, I didn't know the party was going to be at Anita's. So hopefully you were able to notice some of the words that we've discussed in the dialogue. You heard que bola. You also heard guateque and malecón in this dialogue. So there's one part that I know was really fast that I want to break down a little bit more just because I know it was really difficult to understand. And this was the part where he said he got stuck at work with a last minute client. But don't worry, the guys called me and they got to the pier just now. All right, so on that part, it says, Me enredé en la pincha con un cliente que llegó a última hora. Pero no te preocupes que los socios me llamaran y apenas y acaban de llegar al malecón. Okay, so... 
definitely check out the show notes because you will be able to read the entire dialogue and hopefully we'll start to get used to this accent. Now, the Cuban Spanish dialect is definitely one of the more difficult to understand, but I guarantee you, if you're able to understand Cuban Spanish speakers, you will be able to understand almost anyone who speaks Spanish. So definitely check out the show notes, read through the dialogue, and listen to it more than once so that you can train your ear to get used to the rhythm that Cubans speak Spanish. You're definitely not going to get this on the first try. So check out the show notes page, read through the dialogue as you listen, and rinse and repeat. I hope you've enjoyed this review of just a taste of Cuban Spanish. Now, if you're interested in learning more Cuban Spanish, check out the show notes at learnspanishconsalsa.com forward slash Cuban Spanish. There you'll find the show notes for today's episode with references to everything we mentioned and also an exclusive discount for podcast listeners. So if you go to learnspanishconsalsa.com forward slash Cuban Spanish, you'll be able to access a special coupon code with a 20% discount for the Cuban Spanish 101 bilingual phrase book. Now, this has over 100 phrases that are unique to Cuba. So if you are interested in learning more Cuban Spanish, definitely check out that offer. You'll be able to download the ebook and you'll also get audio of every single word so you can hear exactly how it's pronounced by a native Spanish speaker from Cuba. So you'll get access to that entire phrase book. You'll also be able to listen to each and every one of those phrases. And you'll also get several examples in context. So you know exactly how each word is used and what it means. So that's my offer to you as a thank you for listening to our podcast. So that's LearnSpanishConSalsa.com forward slash Cuban Spanish. So with that, I'm going to close out this episode of Learn Spanish Con Salsa. I hope in the few minutes that you spent listening today, you have learned something that takes you just one step closer from a Spanish beginner to bilingual. Hasta luego. Thank you for listening to the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast at LearnSpanishConSalsa.com. 